सो कैन यू टेल मी वॉट्स दी मोस्ट कॉमन थिंग एट होम दैट यूज इज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी अपार्ट फ्रॉम योर फोन टू पुट योर चार्जिंग इन यप अहम लाइट बल्ब बट हियर इज अ बिट ऑफ हिस्ट्री इन लेट एटीन हंड्रेड्स थॉमस एडिसन whom you all might know building on the work of scientists like joseph swan created the first electric bulb that was long lasting and reliable here is a picture of just the bulb that was created by thomas edison it changed the world you know but here is the twist if you really zoom in on this light bulb you will observe that bulb doesn't glow because of the electricity shines inside it it glows because the filament gets super hot when electric current flows through it in real life this is how it would really look like if you try to capture it with some high tech camera you would have seen on tv or some place around you where heating up a steel rod might make it orange red in color similarly heating up the metallic filament here produces light so to understand this as a scientific inquiry when electric current passes through the wire the wire can get hot a little warm in some cases or really hot in others in other words light that we get is not from the electric current itself but more due to the heating effect of electric current let's see it in action with a simple experiment let's try this activity of observing the heating effect of electric current for this you need to take two battery cells of 1.5 voltage the normal cells you get from the market that you normally use in your home appliances are of 1.5 voltage so taking two cells would make it total 3 voltage you also need to take a switch and a small torch bulb and now when you connect them with wires you make a whole circuit all by your own you can start with touching the bulb before turning on the switch as a step 2 you have to switch on and let the bulb glow for around 1 minute When you switch off the bulb after a minute you touch the bulb again did it feel warmer that's the heating effect in action the current passed through the filament and heated it up even this basic activity now should be done only under adult supervision never touch a real bulb connected to your home electricity you know they run on high voltage and get dangerously hot this activity is safe only because we are using two small batteries like 3 voltage which don't carry enough power to hurt you neither it can electrocute you nor it can generate so much heating that you will get burned so again safety is always important when you conduct such experiments now let's try the same activity with a nichrome wire nichrome is kind of a metal mixture call it nichrome nichrome you will hear multiple pronunciation and that's your choice nichrome is kind of a metal mixture called an alloy that gets hot when electricity flows through it which is why it is used in heaters and toasters use a thin nichrome wire tied between two wires and connect it to ba- two batteries as usual and there is a switch to control the electric current you follow the same steps where you touch the wire before turning on then you turn on the switch and wait for a few seconds here not the full minute and after that you briefly touch the wire again it would feel warmer The safety note is the same here you can try this only with the low voltage batteries as i have mentioned before it is just 3 volt of current so it's not that dangerous for us but in real life never touch live wires or the main powered devices and always do such experiments with adult supervision so let's try to understand what makes the filament wire heat up well actually it's the material of the wire that provides certain resistance to the electric current which results in the heating If you really think about it the amount of heat produced in a wire depends on first its material what the wire is made of how long the wire is in other words the length of it and how thick or thin it is in other words thickness so if you want to summarize this material length and thickness of the wire that determines how much heat it produces that's why regular wires in circuits don't heat up they are really thin and the current voltage they pass is really low for it to melt the copper wire usually the normal wires that are used in electricity in house are made up of coppers you have probably seen electric iron geysers room heaters even electric stoves all of them work using the heating effect of electric current they have this special coils that are made of specific material and they heat up fast and do the job of heating now these coils are also called elements so 
if you want to try dismantling these devices, you can go to an electrician and ask for the element, elements of iron. Give me element of iron, give, give me element of electric stove, give me elements of electric geyser. Now we saw the benefits of the heating effect of electric current. But again, there are also some downsides of it. For that, let's go back to the bulb. When an incandescent bulb glows, a big part of the electricity it uses is wasted as a heat. And this is not ideal. So what's better? Well, there are already two inventions existing for it. One is light emitting diode bulbs or you would rather know it as LED bulbs and the compact fluorescent lamp which is CFLs. They give the same amount of light using less electricity which again wastes less heat. Among these two nowadays LEDs are preferred over the CFLs because they last longer and use even less electricity compared to CFL. That's why they are better for the environment and of course for your electricity bill. Now here is a quick tip. When buying bulbs or other appliances, look for the ISI mark. It's the stamp from Bureau of Indian Standards showing you the product meets safety and efficiency standard which is often needed in such electric appliances. So just to have a quick recap, what did we learn? We learned that electric current can produce heating effect in the materials. And we use this effect in appliances like irons, heaters and bulbs. Heat depends on the material, length and the thickness of the wire. We also learned that old bulbs also waste electricity as heat and as their energy saving substitutes we use LEDs and CFLs now. And LEDs preferred over the CFLs. But the most important thing to understand while conducting all of these activities on your own is to always follow the safety rules and use only low voltage setups for the activities. Okay, you know one last thought. What if fire heats up too much? Can it break? Can it cause damage? Our next video will explore a very important safety device that protects us when wire gets too hot or when the voltage gets too high. Stay tuned for the next video and keep learning. Thank you.